Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the worst case design consideration for equal charging and discharging time. When we are trying to do the charging and the discharging time, same, we know that we are talking about symmetric inverter. For people who just need to recap real quick, let's quickly understand this. This is my input, this is my output. And here there will be a capacitor. The charging is going to happen through the PMOS, correct? And the discharging is going to happen to the NMOS. So if I have to say, my charging time, tau C, is nothing but resistance of the PMOS, internal resistance, RP, into the load capacitance CL, whereas the discharging time is equal to resistance of the NMOS into CL. Now we know that, we very clearly know that in a symmetric inverter, we try to make our KR equal to 1. That means KN is equal to KP. We'll get into this in a fraction of a second. Before that, let's understand what's going to happen. So load is same for both. This is RP, this is RN, correct? Which one would be greater, RP or RN and why? Let's quickly see that. So RP and RN, we can always correlate it with IP or current through the PMOS and current through the NMOS. Let's quickly go ahead and see what's going to happen. So we know that current drain current through a PMOS is directly proportional to nu P C O X W by L of PMOS. Similarly for NMOS is nothing but I D N MOS mu N C O X W by L of NMOS. Technically this is proportional right? So if this both needs to be same for symmetric, that is KR equal to one. The same thing is being told here as well. CL, CL is common. So in order to have equal charging and discharging, your RP should be equal to RN, or I can easily say that your IDP should be equal to IDN in terms of proportionality, which is nothing but IDP proportional to mu P COX W by L of P equal to mu n c o x w by l of n. This is exactly what I meant when I said k n equal to k p. So c o x c o x gets cancelled. So mu n is equal to, we know that the mobility of the electrons is faster than that of holes, two to three times that of PMOS. For understanding, let's assume that mobility of electrons is twice mobility of holes. And if that's the case, let's substitute this in this star equation mu n is equal to twice mu p, right? So mu n equal to twice mu p w by l of n mos mu p w by l of p mos mu p mu p will get cancelled. Let's presume that I am taking the w by l of n mos as 1. So if both my sides have to be equal, this is 2 into 1, that is 2. If this has to be equal, I need to increase the size of my p mos. So w by l of p mos has to be 2. In order to get equal RP and RN or equal charging and discharging time. Okay, so let's write our conclusion here. So this was my inverter. We wanted to make it symmetric. Symmetric means we wanted to achieve equal charging discharging time. We first said that let's presume the W by L of NMOS to be equal to 1. And for that one, we assume that it was giving us a resistance equal to RN. We wanted RN to be equal to RP. For that we saw that if that has to happen, W by L of PMOS should be equal to 2, then I'll get RP. We also saw that if W by L of PMOS would have been basic, which was equal to 1, we saw that, right? Here if it would have been 1, W by L of PMOS, that means this term and this term wouldn't have been same or that also meant that IDP would have been slower or charging would have taken a longer period of time. So if W by L of PMOS would have been equal to 1, what would have been my equivalent resistance? Very, very simple. Don't get confused at all. W by L and resistance, they both are inversely proportional. Let's first see for NMOS. So for NMOS, if my W by L is 1, I get the value of resistance, which is equal to Rn, equivalent resistance. For PMOS, if my W by L was 1, I knew that charging time would have been more or the resistance would have been of a higher value. And I'm presuming that mu n is equal to twice mu p, then this would have been two times slower correct then my pull down or my nmos so this would have nothing but twice rp isn't it because charging is rp into cl and because this would have been slower the mobility ratio is 2 then this would have been twice slower than discharging so it would have been twice rp correct 
the severian get that so that's how i got with the unit size pmos i would have got twice rp we know that i want to decrease this resistance and make it equal to rn so i reduced the resistance by increasing the w by l because we know that w by l and resistance are inversely proportional so when i made it 2 i got it twice rp by 2 which was nothing but rp and now i finally made my rn and rp to be same so i have equal charging and discharging time suppose i would have had mobility as 3 times mu p then w by l of p mos would have been 3 when w by l of n mos would have been 1 to get equal charging and discharging we just understood this let's go ahead and complete this table real quick we will do that after we do a similar type of analysis for a two input nand gate 